but kind of looking, pretending to look at the stained glass and all the artifacts. And, but she was kind of hovering near us. And I went up to her and I said, hi. I said, what's your name? She said, Polly. And she started bantering, and she was absolutely delightful. You know when God has prepared something for you? She, she was like the low-hanging fruit that was just ready to drop. And she had this lovely, shiny face, and she was sweet, and she was gentle. And I said to her, do you know Jesus? She said, I'm Catholic. So I said, where are you from? She said, I'm from, she still bantered with me. She said, where do you think I'm from? She was from Brazil. And she was wonderful. And we spoke, and as we tapped the fruit in Jesus, you could tell. And she stood there inside Canterbury Cathedral and gave her heart to Jesus. It was just the most wonderful, beautiful thing. She called, and God had the victory. We need to be alert as we go around. It says, so God is calling us to be tuned into the Spirit, to see what the Spirit is saying to the churches everywhere. Because we are the church, and we need to be everywhere. And as we go, we need to be alert to the fact of what God is saying to us, the church, with his Spirit. Then I want to say number lesson number five. His timing is perfect. Delays are often not interruptions. They're not necessary interruptions, but we think they are. They could be God's divine providence. And we saw it time and time again. Do you remember when Peter and Andrew were on the side of the, the bank and Jesus came along? And he called them, and it says, immediately they left everything and followed him. It was that timing. Now, Let's think about that just for just a moment. They could have been off for the day. They could have maybe not been on the bank. They could have been out on their boat. But God's timing was perfect because they could have been elsewhere. Yet because of God's perfect timing, Peter became that rock on which Jesus helped found the church. And he would pioneer the gospel to the Gentiles be part of the apostolic, the first apostolic team, and would pen several sections of the New Testament because of God's perfect timing. He could have missed Jesus altogether. And look at Zacchaeus in Luke chapter 19 and verse 4. It says, So he, Zacchaeus, ran ahead and climbed into a sycamore tree in order to see him. For he was about to pass through that way. And when Jesus came to that place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, Hurry and come down, for today I must stay at your house. And he hurried and came down and received him gladly. He could have just climbed up the tree five minutes earlier or five minutes later and missed out what Jesus had. And we find that perfect timing in everything. We saw it time and again. I want to show you another picture now if you look at this young man. Um we had a day that we set out and uh, the tall guy walking next to the dog there, that's Louis Else, who is one of our apostolic team from Jeffrey's Bay. Some of you were in Louis' school, you know him. And uh, the guy behind was Henny, the little chubby guy. He was, um, he was one of our pastors in uh, Somerset East for many, for about 18 years. And we started that day and it was raining and it was sloppy and we were skidding around on the clay and it was not a happy, well, it was a happy morning, but it was difficult. We were climbing steep hills and going through forests. And as we came over this ridge, right there, that young man, the rain had just stopped for about three minutes, that young man came out of the forest with his dog. And we started talking to him, and he said he was about to go off to university to do his third year at university. And as we stood there, he gave his heart to Jesus. If we'd have been 60 seconds later or 60 seconds earlier, we would have missed him because God's timing is perfect. And that's us actually walking on with him after he'd given his heart to Jesus. We, he, he walked with us. We, he walked for about 15 minutes with us, with his dog. And we started to explain to him how he could be part of the body of Christ. Louis had a wonderful few days with me. He started out, he had the best of everything. We walked through the, the forest, 
but the following that day we finished the leg on the bottom section and then there was a third leg of the pilgrim's way that started in london and came down to a place called oxford which linked up with the main pilgrim's way to canterbury and the original um leaders of the church becket used to go to can uh, go to southwark cathedral and start in london and he would journey down and he would walk to canterbury that way so that is the third official leg of the pilgrim's way and so we wanted to do all of it and so we had been up with the people from the turning on the saturday celebrating on the streets of london and we linked up that day to start the leg from southwark cathedral down toward uh, toward the the main route and so louis was with me this day in the forest then we finished the bottom leg that day and the next day we started in london <coughs> which was quite wonderful because london you get everything you get the city you get the offices you get the historic buildings you get the hustle you get the tourists and as we began to walk and you get the slum areas as well and we got all of that in one day and we started to walk along and it was it was quite wonderful because um as we walked along through that area um we found some of the folk who'd been with us on the saturday at the turning and they were so excited and the one woman had known louis from some other ministry uh, and we bumped this team from the turning the, who were on the street you'd thought that paul mccartney and ringo were coming down the street i mean they got so excited they dragged us into their church and 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 put us in with their pastor and we landed up washing the pastor's feet and it was all cracking loose around us and eventually i said look we got to get back out on the street so out we went and as we going along as we walk along a guy steps out of this building with all this graffiti and stuff on it behind him and he stands there we said what do you do he says i have a sound company i rent out sound equipment and i go to all these big concerts and do all these gigs so if you just put that up that's him over there with the check shirt on and as we're standing there he's just an old rocker you know i mean he's just that was his offices that was his warehouse he was working there he stepped out and we were able to share the gospel with him and he gave his heart to jesus right on the sidewalk there as he stepped outside his building because god's timing is perfect in all things again if we hadn't have stopped at the church we would have missed him if we'd have stayed any longer in the church we'd have missed him and as we walked down just after that that was god's perfect timing and he stepped into god's perfect timing coming into land lesson number 6 how are you doing you hanging on you enjoying the lessons of life okay all right um i want to tell you about an interesting character in fact i'd like to show you the next photograph It says here it has to, I said it has to be about the kingdom coming that was the last lesson but this man next to me over there with the blue t-shirt he is a character of note he is a unique fascinating character of his town he's also a church of the nations pastor there. he planted the church many many years ago we took him there to the town to plant the church and so he said dave please i really want to come and walk with you i need to be on the streets i i need to connect with us but apart from being the mayor and the pastor of okhampton he became the ma- mayor of the whole of devon which meant he had uh five or six other pa- um, mayors under him he also is the chairman of the rail commission for De- devon and apart from that when he's bored he runs an accounting practice on the side i don't know what he does in his spare time but that's what he does so he now comes to walk with us on the road and he arrives and we we walk along and that particular day was quite a prophetic day because we could see the skyline of london in the distance but we walked in this very um run down suppressed side of london um called erith right on the the dockyards and uh, the industrial area of the thames and as we walked we prophetically bound the vials and spirits and all sorts of things that we had found there and it was an amazing day and i'm going to tell the story a little bit back to front 
he wrote to me about 10 days after this. And he said, Dave, I've never told you this, but I wanted to just share this testimony with you. He said, for years and years, I've had a zinging in my head and my ears. I've been to all sorts of doctors, had procedures, all sorts of things done to my nasal passages, my ears, and all sorts of stuff. And he said, nothing can fix it. Now, the night before I walked with you on the road, he said he came and slept in the house where we were staying. He said, the zinging was so bad I couldn't sleep that night. He said, but when I drove back to Devon late that night, having walked with you all day, he said, I actually discovered it was quiet in the car and that the zinging had gone. And as we walked, God healed me. And I thought, that's amazing. Here's this guy who's got so much on his plate, and yet he traverses the mountains of the kingdom because two days after he was with me, he went to the conservative party conference and he sent me this next photograph. There he is with the prime minister. And I want to say, Rudyard Kipling says, if you can walk with kings and not lose your common touch, then you're a man. If we walk within the kingdom of God, and whether we are speaking to the, the high or the lowly, do you remember when Paul was brought before the governors and the rulers of the day? What did he say? He said, if you continue to speak this way, you will convert me. Mike crosses all those mountains because he's a kingdom man. And it's got to be about the kingdom where we are. We need to have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. We need to be moving in concert and partnership with the Holy Spirit. And you may ask, well, how will I know what God wants me to do next? And here's an inspiration that was triggered by one of the two men that I spoke about. I spoke about Beckett, and I spoke about Augustine. One of them said this. He said, whosoever wisely examines the works of God will speedily discover what is to be done next. That was Thomas Beckett. You see, we'll only hear when we are walking in step and rhythm of righteousness with the Holy Spirit. We need to be hungering and thirsting after that righteousness, and we need to be taking those little foxes by the neck and rooting them out of our lives so that we can walk in the fullness of that rhythm of God unhindered. We need to ask God to change us continually and daily that he'd open our eyes. I want you to do that. I want you to ask God to continually to change you and open your eyes. You see, we're all on a journey every day. And let's ensure that we learn from day to day what the word tells us in that it says, Lord, teach us to number our days. That we might walk in the fullness and the rhythm of your grace. God bless you. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that we can come to you. We thank you, Lord, that there's a lesson in each day of our journey through life. We thank you, Lord, for the wonderful privilege of journeying with you. We thank you, Lord, for life's exciting adventure. And Lord, whether we, um, whether we are in tribulation or whether we are in victory, wh whatever it is, Lord, we know that it is your season and we choose to walk it with you. I want to say that God cannot begin to touch us until we are on that journey with him. And there's no way that we can be on the journey until we start by receiving him as our Lord and Savior. Jesus said, unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. I didn't say that. No pastor said that. Jesus said, you must be born again. And so if that's you and you've come today and you've never given your heart to Jesus, the Bible says that today is the day of salvation. The Bible also, you, you might say, Dave, you don't know my life, and maybe I don't. But I do know this, that the word of God promises that if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. And you might have tried every way, and you might have tried everything, but there's nothing that takes you so far from Jesus that he cannot recover you. And so today is your day. And I would love to shake your hand and pray for you and say, why don't you say, yes, count me in, Lord, this is my day. And so if that's you and you've come today and you don't know Jesus, 
I want to give you the opportunity now just to say, yes, count me in, Lord. I'm on your side. If that's you, just pop your hand up where you're sitting and just say, yes, just, just raise your hand and say, yes, Lord, I want to receive you. I've tried my way. Is there anyone here I'd like to do that? Just put your hand up quickly so I can see you wherever you are. Is there anyone? Okay, then I must accept that, that everyone here has done that. As I always say, that's both good and bad. Good that everyone has received Jesus. Not so good that you didn't bring your unsaved friend. <laughs> but the word says that we need to operate with signs following. I just, just feel I need to pause. Are you sure there's no one here who wants to give their heart to Jesus before I move on? Don't, don't hang back. That's you. Are you sure? All right, let's, be, let's, let's move on. The word says we need to respond. And I think that there are a lot of you who think, Lord, I would love to be more effective where I am. I'd love to be more alert to what is happening around me where I am. And if you would like just a, a fresh spirit of anointing of alertness to come on you in this service, just a fresh anointing for alertness in this service, I'd love to agree with you today because, because we could all do that. So if you would like to agree with me and we're going to pray a prayer of agreement that you'd like to just, just raise your hand, wave at me wherever you are. Okay, that's wonderful. Thank you. You can sit with us. Thank you. Father God, we thank you that your word declares that those who are led by the Spirit, to them you gave the right to be called the sons of God. And Lord, I pray for a spirit of alertness and sharpness and urgency on everyone who raised their hand. And I pray, Father God, that even as they step out tomorrow, they would see with fresh eyes. They would walk with fresh eyes. That there would be a fresh boldness within them to share the love of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that we, we read your word this morning that you are not restricted to save a few or many. And so we release that spirit afresh on everyone in this church. We thank you for that alertness, for that sensitivity in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. just want to encourage you. Um, just look around. If everyone in the next month was able to touch someone because of the sensitivity of the Spirit, and you were able to bring them. Rod would have a wonderful new building. <laughs> this, church, this building would be too small. <laughs> and now all of you who worked hard on the building, just uh, don't worry about it. God's got it. <laughs> it would be a nice problem. And it is a nice problem, and it will happen. Because if we believe that we prayed that prayer today, we will start to see the fruit. So, Father God, we just thank you for your love. We thank you for this wonderful home called, this part of your vineyard called Coastal Family Church. And we ask, Father God, that eye has not seen nor ear heard those things that you will yet do in this place. You are. You can get a link at the church website, the church need to share today. So, Father, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for what you've done in our hearts today. Thank you for the journey that Dave and Carol have been on, that it's not just for them, it's not just for the people that they have touched in other parts of the world, but they're for here in the hearts of the people we call Coastal Family Church Home. We bless your name. Amen. Family, refreshments over in the, the kitchen area. Again, make sure to greet a veteran that you uh, want to appreciate and say hi to somebody you haven't met before. Have a blessed week.